A keystone species is any species in an ecosystem whose population and behavior affects every other species. That's certainly what we are as a species right now. If you look at the foundation of our current system, you know, it's, it's based on a flawed understanding of, of nature. And a lot of our political ideologies, our economic system, it's all based on this understanding that we're separate from natural systems. We've seen enough examples, you know, in, in different civilizations and societies that have existed you know, throughout history. I mean, invariably, you'll find that the reason why they no longer exist is because they undermine their resource base. The word agriculture comes from agrarian culture. Agrarian means the soil. Culture means the enrichment of it. Agriculture today is the destruction and depletion and extraction of soil. It's an extractive process, closer to mining. All of the agricultural soils where our food is coming from um, is losing around two millimeters of topsoil per acre per year, every single year. It really can't continue. So as we look at the, the present modern world that we live in, it's largely an industrial economy. And this idea of centralization, mass production, long distance transportation goes completely against how it is that evolution has actually done what it's done so beautifully and ingeniously on the earth. And what we're looking towards is this question of adaptation. How can we as a species really adapt to how the earth works? In order for us to design an agriculture or a culture that is ecological, then we have to look to our local models, and that's the forest. That is our teacher. An ecosystem generally doesn't require lots of energy input from the outside from another ecosystem. It's finding a way to work with the sun and all the natural cycles throughout the seasons to, to produce what it needs. Nature's the best thing we got. Like, point to something else that's better. Like, there's nothing that we don't have anything else. And it hasn't only survived, it's, it's thrived. It's found ways to adapt to, to new conditions. Let's now design ecosystems. They're ecologically sound, economically productive, and it's permanent agriculture. Permaculture is not a thing. It's a way of thinking. It's a process of design. And the word permaculture comes from permanent and agriculture. And it's putting those two things together and asking the question, can we create a permanent agriculture? Not permanent in the sense of concrete, but permanent in the sense that it is built upon and grounded in the resilient diversity of how ecosystems work. And it's also a permanent culture in the sense that can culture become something that is grounded in the real resilience of biology? And we can really look at permaculture design as a whole way of seeing the world, looking at problems and seeing how they can turn into solutions. 
permaculture is a design process that's applicable in any landscape for any set of objectives. You know, permaculture is dependent on the prospects for us doing good, not us just doing less bad. And that really has been the driver of the, a lot of the modern environmental movement is people doing less bad. Let's just do less damage. Be eco. Lower our footprint. And concepts like this create a very dangerous self-image because it's a self-image that's based on the notion that we're inherently bad. We're inherently a scourge on the face of the planet. I want to have as small of an impact as possible. Ultimately, it'd be better if you didn't live with that approach, right? And that's where you go with that philosophy. Well, I don't want to be dead. I want to live. And I want the lives around me to live better as well because I have lived. So all of a sudden, humans start doing good. And then impact is a great thing. Footprint is something we want to leave.